Oh, hey, hello. Stephen Casimiro here with the Adventure Journal Podcast. Today, we are going to talk about the technology that, ironically, can replace your technology. We're going to be talking primarily about the Apple Watch Ultra and smartwatches and the role that they play in adventure and outdoor recreation. Here with me today is Justin Hausman, our senior editor. Hey, Justin. Hello. I also a confirmed Luddite. But, a uh, confirmed Luddite. And we have a special guest, our sound engineer, producer, and somebody with whom I share a last name, Jackson Casimiro. Jackson, hey. Hi, how you doing? I'm uh, glad to be here because I have a lot to say about this topic, a lot to say about technology. So I'll just be kind of supervising, making sure you uh, get, get the right. right points across. Yeah, yeah. we've been wanting to bring Jackson as, his, as our sound engineer and producer, has been a part of every podcast lurking in the background. But we want to make sure that he keeps us on track because... We need a governor. We, you know, we we've got to have somebody who keeps us on point. So today happens to be Halloween. Justin, what's that outfit? What's your costume? <laughs> uh, pod, uh, forty-five-year-old podcasting man. Or do you want to see my helmet? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. For for those of you on on YouTube, we should see his his bike helmet with the light up uh, pumpkin on top. Well, the uh, the light up part is, is is gone. But this is this is my setup for last night's. Fairfax Marin County uh, annual Halloween pumpkin ride. I think it Excellent. used to be called the Headless Horseman ride, but it's uh, recently changed. Pretty fun. A couple hundred dudes and women and kids and old people riding through the hills. Nice. Uh, Is that yeah. just a screw going into your visor? Well, no. See, this I've had this for four years now, this paper mache pumpkin head. Most people buy theirs, mm -hmm. like the little plastic trick-or-treat jack lantern but that's not good enough for me this is a homemade paper mache one wow and uh usually it just zip ties to a regular helmet but since i fell and broke myself a couple years ago i only ride in full face uh on a mountain bike and the only way i could make it work was with little bungee cords so but then oh, i got a little bungee. a little red light in there that lights up and this is just my regular light pretty fun nice well, I am dressed as uh, an editor who um, has to get a, a new issue of a beautiful printed quarterly completed into the printer in the next two weeks. So um, if you hear stress in my voice, that's why. Mm -hmm. So Scary. the goal of today's episode is to talk about how a smartwatch can actually, instead of adding more complications and technology to your outdoor experience, can actually make things a little bit simpler and easier and maybe reduce the things that stand in your way. Um, a note about when we discuss gear, so we do not use affiliate links. I don't care whether you buy an Apple Watch or a Garmin watch, we have no skin in the game. We are also not trying to, uh, we're not trying to convince you to buy or not buy anything. Um, not, uh, um, not planning on doing an in-depth spec by spec uh, review. You can get those all over the internet. Uh, that's not who we are. I don't think that's what AJ readers and listeners expect from us. Um, I think what's more helpful is to talk about how we actually use these watches in the field, what our personal experience is with it, the things that we think work and don't work. And then finally, before we dive in, I want to just give you a disclaimer, which is that um, I can't remember if we mentioned in our previous episode about knocking down cairns and the use of cairns and trails, but uh, as with cairns and phones um, and smartwatches, you should never rely on one device for your safety in the backcountry. The most important thing that you can take is common sense, map, compass, uh, a good brain, and paying attention. So Phones and smartwatches and whatnot are there to support you. Um, I would never use it as my sole device to uh, to get me back. I will just use it as, um, as an adjunct. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Do uh, you guys want to dive in with anything before I talk about the size of the market? Anything you want to add to that? Um, maybe do we all want to say our, our watch inventory? Sure. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. We start. Well, so I I bought both of these refurbished a couple of years ago. I got I think it's the Phoenix Six Pro, the Garmin Phoenix. Um, 
because of reasons I'm sure we'll talk about. Very long battery life, very capable fitness watch. And then partially because of the kind of size and footprint a big fitness watch takes up on your wrist, I wanted, this was when the Ultra came out, but I actually wanted something smaller. So I got a refurbished Series 7 Apple Watch Cellular, which uh, the cellular, for a lot of the same reasons that my dad was interested in, leave your phone behind, be able to still access notifications and stuff from your wrist. And I think the two of them are a great pair, a great supplement to a phone. I think it all kind of makes sense the way I use them. Okay. Well, we'll unpack that a little bit. Justin, what are you rocking? Uh, the, my daily my daily watch is the, is the Ultra 1 because the 2 is out now, but the uh, Apple Watch Ultra, um, which is my first... Uh, I guess it's not my first smartwatch. I also have a Garmin Solar Instinct, which is like a, I mean, super duper stripped down uh, smartwatch that has unbelievable battery life, partially because it, it replenishes itself with solar, which is awesome. So that thing can go like weeks, uh, but it's pretty, you know, bare bones. Like I can see that I got a text. I can read the first three words. I think it has some breadcrumb dropping ability. All it really does is talk to the app, to the Garmin app, which is actually fantastic. So um, that's that's what that one's kind of for. But um, I, at this point, the Apple Watch Ultra, I mean, it's my phone and my watch. I don't bring my phone out of the house very often anymore. So Great. This is, cool. This is me. Well, and so I was, uh, I was on the Garmin platform for probably 10 years. And I've it's been a long time since I've really done in-depth testing. But um, I was an early Polar user in Sunto and... Um, in some of the early Garmin's, and then I found the Phoenix to be the um, the best uh, all around until the Ultra, the Apple came along, um, and not until the Ultra. I felt like the early Apple watches did didn't give me enough features, and so I want to stress for me, I'm not throwing shade on any of these other brands, any of these other watches. They are they're tremendously. Um, well executed smart watches and fitness watches out there. Um, Apple is the largest company in the world. And when the largest company in the world introduces a watch specifically for adventure, <laughs> I, I'm going to take notice. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so I, that's the only watch I have now actually is the ultra. It's the, um, I no longer have a Phoenix. I don't have a analog. I'm, I'm only using the ultra. So I want to just, for context, give you some specs about the size of the market, the size of technology, the size of, sort of fitness tracking. This isn't super comprehensive, but I sort of cherry picked a few here that will give us a sense of um, the landscape that we're talking about. The first one is that Americans now spend about seven hours a day looking at screens. And if you sleep for eight hours a night, let's see, do the math on that gives you what, 16 hours. So that's almost half of the hours that you are awake in a day, you're looking at a screen. Um, I haven't found a good source for how many of those hours are looking at a phone, but mm -hmm. does it even matter, right? I mean, I think especially with things like Apple's handoff, it's all kind of the same thing. We're accessing social and news and all these things. It doesn't really matter what the device is. One one metric that does tell the story about a sad metric that tells the story about phones is that on average, this is average, Americans pick up their phone 352 times a day. Wow. Shocking, wow. right? How would, how, the, you know, Apple probably has that information because it can tell when you've picked your phone up, I'm sure. Oh, they all do. Oh so my gosh, that's fascinating. We should have access to that. I want to know all those things about how my phone use. Well, I think the new iPhone 15 Pro Max does that. I don't <laughs> know if it's, a, I don't, Jackson would probably know better than I would whether it's an OS thing or whether it's related to the phone itself. But I was, in part of my prep, I was, for this, I, I learned that the, I don't know if it's the all the 15s, but I know that the iPhone 15 Pro Max will tell you how many times a day you pick it up. That's that's incredible. Yeah, three hundred and fifty-two times. Wow. We should all have a screen time. Yeah. Metrics in our settings, and so you can see how often the the total amount of time you're looking at it. I'm not sure. 
There is pickups. So okay. I can tell you my number of pickups. What wow. is it? So last week's average was 37 a day. Well, you, what, wow. you're, look at you. But I mean, I do sit on my yeah. laptop for work yeah. all day yeah. where I get my texts, my notifications. I do have way. my watch as well. Um, the most important thing for me is a 15 minute timer on TikTok. That <laughs> is the, That's the number one way to keep my screen time clamped down. That's smart. So a couple more specs here and then let's we'll dive into how we're using it and why I, I think it's a game changer. So Strava, everybody knows Strava. Uh, the most recent number that I could find a uh, year I could find was 2022. In 2022, Strava hit 100 million registered users. I have no idea how many of those are regular users, but that's that's a huge number. That is, that's worldwide, but just for some context, U.S. population is now what, 330 million, 340 million. So they have the equivalent of a third of the U.S. population. And also in 2022, their uh, revenue was $220 million, and that was up 30% over 2021. And then finally, um, as far as smartwatches, which are like truly smartwatches, where, which are integrated with cellular service and whatnot and GPS, um, are relatively new and growing fast. So for 2023, the year that we're recording this, there are expected to be sold or purchased 134 million units. And five years from now, it's expected to be about half a billion. So it's a <laughs> half a billion new smartwatches sold per year uh-huh. by 2028. So that's a lot. How many? Fo- I wonder how many. I wonder what that would be for phones too. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. But watches and phones. One of the so there are a couple of things have changed that I it, it, how I that lead to how I find this the Apple Ultra so or so empowering, which is that you don't need to carry your phone anymore with it. And Jackson, I would uh, our IT guy, I would ask you, can you I think you can use the Ultra Watch without a phone at all. I don't know that you need to be an iPhone owner as you historically did. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I think the only way to do that, it was a feature really intended for parents setting up an apple watch only for their children and so you need somebody else's iphone in order to set it up and i don't think really the intention is that it's a standard adult setup for it to be standalone okay well and so for all those android folks out there apologies that this is so filtered through the apple ecosystem i'm fully immersed in that justin is jackson is and this is you know i i get it um but this is uh yeah again the largest tech company in the world bringing out an adventure watch so um so so the, the premise of this discussion and and how Justin and I are using our ultras is not fully eliminating your smartphone but dramatically reducing your smartphone and and every one of us has a different use case for me um my mom is is 90 she lives on our street uh, she is an amputee. Um, she does not have her right leg below the knee or actually from above the knee. And, uh, but she's independent. She's, uh, taken buses and Ubers and all around, but she needs us from time to time. Um, my kids, if I get a phone call from my kids, I know they probably need something I want to be there for them. And so it's really critical in my life that I remain connected to the people who need me. Um, I don't, I have all my notifications turned off. So emails and texts and all that stuff is not that important, but my family being able to get a hold of me when I'm on a long run or a long ride is, is really important. And I'm human. Um, if I have my phone, you know, I might stop, take pictures, whatever. And I found it really distracting. The ultra with cellular enables you to take your calls, to get your texts in, to do it without your phone at all. So that's how I've been using it. Justin, how about you? Tell me about, I think you got your Ultra, you bought your Ultra not long after. I know I was singing the praises. I was raving about the experience once I was leaving my phone behind. I think you bought yours within a few weeks of me getting mine. Yeah, uh, yeah, you you definitely sold me on it. But I, I remember I went to the Apple store for something else entirely. Um, I, I've always been a 
very much anti Apple Watch. I don't know. I live in San. I live in the Bay Area. I'm very contrarian, you know. So I I never thought I would get one. Um, but I started playing with it in the in the Apple Store one day, and the just the the build quality was super impressive, and it looks it looks cool on your wrist. The screen's amazing, and I started playing with all the features that. It has, and I, I I went home and I started thinking about it, and you know I, I have two young kids. Uh, my 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 window for getting outside during the day is isn't always very very big, and especially if I want to go surf, I you know I'll off you, you're kind of out there by your you're out there by yourself. I have no idea what's going on at home. You know, there's lots of times where the waves would be fantastic, and I will think, oh gosh, like I wish I could stay out for another hour, but I, I I'm due home or whatever, and I've missed out on a lot of good surf sessions because I I have to get back and so i thought about it more i thought well if i get this watch i'd be able to take texts and 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 phone calls in the ocean i mean theoretically i could do that i guess with a regular apple watch too but um and that's just been a huge game changer so that's that's for me that's that's been the 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 coolest part about this watch i can go i go for a surf a place i've never before been able to talk to anybody and i can get i can get a text i can text my wife i've taken phone calls out there um which i would have i would have punched myself in the face you know, like 10 years ago thinking that that would matter, but it, it does at a certain point it really does. And it's not that I'm obsessed with being connected. Um, it's actually the exact opposite, but, uh, but that, that allows me more water time. It allows me more trail time, it allows me more time to do all the things I want to do. And like, like you, Steve, I'd never take my phone anywhere with me. I'm sure it's frustrating to you cause you probably, you call a lot and I, <laughs> I don't have my phone and, um, I'll take, I'll take calls on my watch. If I know it's, you know, if it's like my wife, you know, I'll, I'll see if she needs something. And it's you know, the funny thing about that is, uh, you know, like something like this, like like a video podcast seems fairly futuristic, but there, nothing feels more like sci-fi than, you know, talking on your on your wrist. I feel like I'm in Star Wars or something like that, having a phone call. But it's 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 absolutely incredible. I My screen time has dropped 25 percent. I looked it up since I got the watch um, because I I can't scroll Twitter. I can't scroll Instagram. I can't do any of that sort of stuff. And all it does is the basics. And so that's my main use case for it. Of course, I use it for things like tracking runs and tracking bike rides and stuff like that. But I've, that's never been a big part of how I get outside. So that's not a huge um, thing for me. But just the the connectivity for with my wife and kids is, is, is crucial. I just have to say, I don't stalk him. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> He's not on my friend finder. <laughs> well, I wonder if you could put watches on friend finder. I bet you can. You probably could. I, I, but uh, yeah, you know, we have work things come up on a fairly regular basis. Where the hell is that guy? Mm-hmm. So, um, well, yeah, you let's. Do, you do have one person on this podcast on Friend Finder, and I've definitely been checked up, checked up on before. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting is that when I was younger, I would have just radically resisted. Yeah people knowing where I am or, you know, but I'm the opposite now. I want my family to know where I am uh, from a respect standpoint, from a safety standpoint. I mean, I have the same privacy concerns as, as everybody, but um, I, I, I like it. I like it knowing that, uh, that Joni, that my wife is going to see where I am. If I'm in the back country, I, I, lo- I love that. So, um, well, let's, let's take a quick break. And uh, we'll be right back. You love adventure, we love adventure, and that is why we created Adventure Journal in print. It is the gift that we've made for ourselves and for our friends and hopefully for you that is analog, that gets away from screens, that gives you some of the most interesting, deepest and thoughtful stories from some of the best writers and photographers working in the outdoor space. We do four a year. You get free shipping and a deep discount. It's 60 bucks to have this absolutely beautiful, no batteries necessary celebration of adventure in your mailbox. Get it at adventure-journal.com. I am drinking, it's gotten cold now because we're halfway through the show. I am drinking Long Weekend Coffee. We launched Long Weekend Coffee earlier this year to bring you and us blends that are not fussy, that will take any kind of brew method that we like, whether it's at home, in a cabin, on the tailgate of a truck, doesn't matter. We have four blends. We have dark, medium, espresso roast, and a decaf. I think they're pretty amazing. I guarantee you will like them. Check us out at longweekend.coffee. 
Welcome back. We are discussing the role of smartwatches in adventure, specifically the Apple Ultra. Uh, two out of the three of us here have the Ultra Ones. The two is out now. There aren't many differences between them. One that is, uh, I think, really cool is that the it's a brighter screen. So our screens in the Ultra One um, have are rated 2,000 nits, and the new one is 3,000 nits. I don't know if I would recognize a nit on the street if I saw it, but I know that that sounds like <laughs> sounds like a thousand more to me. It's a, well, not only that, it's fifty percent more. Is it that, that has to eat into the battery life? I would think. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to get to battery life because that is one of the yeah. big uh, red flags that people have with these watches. Do you ever have issues with visibility outdoors? Because I mean, the, the Garmin is a totally different screen type. I I never have. I don't on the watch. I do with the phone. Mm -hmm but I don't on the watch and the Garmin drove me, the Phoenix that I had drove, drove me nuts. My, my Garmin was cool because it, it's, it's a, just a LCD screen, like the, the, the bronze and black. So that was always pretty visible. I, I do have a Suunto that I despise, but mostly cause I can't see it. Um, and I forgot I had it. I used it like a few times and like, no, cause it's so dark, but no, this thing, I've never had issues with the brightness of this watch at all. Right. Our premise here is that this is a piece of technology that can reduce your dependence on technology. And maybe that isn't an issue for you. You know, we're, everybody has their own use case. Um, I want to stay connected to the people I'm connected with. I want them to be able to reach me if somebody needs to be able to reach me. And I'm kind of a metrics geek and I do like to track my, my watch, my watches, my, my runs, my rides, my hikes. I, I like to put all those into Strava and, um, and keep track of that. And what makes the Apple ultra so special is the cellular function. So for on the plan that I'm on with T-Mobile, it's an extra $5 a month and I can take phone calls or make phone calls, send texts directly through the watch without carrying my phone at all. In fact, I have actually tried to leave my phone off and in a, in a drawer as much as possible and just rely on my watch. And it's, it's liberating, man. It mm -hmm. is just, it feels so nice to just go for a run and not have the weight, not have any worries. And with the Garmin, the previous generation Garmin that I had, the Phoenix, I could see if I got a text and I could see if the first, I, the first few words of it, but I, I couldn't respond to it. And so Sometimes I would have to stop. I have to make sure, oh, God, is this an emergency? And, and then I would say, oh, it's nothing. I need to bring more kombucha home or whatever. And so the, the you get basically almost everything that you would want to do on a phone, you can do on a watch. And things that you don't want to do because you get sucked into the scroll monster is not going to be an issue with a watch, with a smartwatch like that. I have a good example of that. The first the first time I rode our um our like really good classic mountain bike loop trail here in, in Fairfax. I'd only lived in town for like a month and uh, I had my Garmin and I got a text from Margaret and it just said, I think it said accident or call me or something like that. My wife, Margaret, who uh, was going to pick up our, our only daughter at the time and I didn't have my phone. And so I had to ride all the way home to find out, to call and see what she needed. And turns out she'd been in a really bad car accident, but it's like, had I had the watch with me right that, you know, something with the connection, I could have fit, handled all that from the trail, like written home, driven out there, like all that stuff. But I had spent 15 minutes getting back home wondering, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So yeah, you're is, not a worrier at all. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's, I mean, it's, it, it makes a big difference. And it it also I, I want to thing also I wanted to add about that is that I've always been a super small phone guy, like the smaller the phone, the better. I've, I always had the iPhone SE for the longest time. Um, and now I have the, whatever the 14, just the regular one. But because of this, I would actually consider getting like the pro max or one of the larger phones because I don't take it. And if I do take it with me, I'm probably going to, it's usually cause I want to have photo, I want to do some photos or what, you know, I might have, maybe I'm going to get a little bit of work done or something like that. Um, but I would actually go to a bigger phone now because this, you know, I basically have a tiny phone on my wrist at all times. Right. Yeah. And, and in practice, uh, it's it's an apple. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, the setting it up with the with the app on the phone, and you've got just a plethora of faces that you can use. It, it's just it's it's seamless. It's smooth. It it always works. It's it's a 
it's a joy to use actually the interface it's a tiny little screen one of the things that i found is that the the speech to text is super accurate and yeah. so even though your little keyboard like if you want to respond to a text those letters are very tiny that's brutal it, that's it, that's it, hard it, it actually works better than you would would think it's still not great but the the speech to text is is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's it's super accurate. So mm-hmm. pricing wise, let's let's uh, reference some pricing here. The the Ultra Two that's out now, I think, is the same price as the original, which is eight hundred bucks. For reference, the top of the line Garmin Phoenix Pro, I, I don't I don't remember the exact model number, but the Pro top line is nine hundred, and if you get the larger bezel, it's a grand. Wow. That's just so much money, and they, that's they, that's LTE and stuff too, right? Presumably, I don't think the Phoenix has LTE. Wow. Um, I, one big distinction in the in the product line with the Phoenix, you kind of pick your size. You also pick whether or not you want solar, which I think mm-hmm. in the future I would, just because. For me, you know, we're kind of talking about this idea of backup plans um the term from a few years ago was kind of called ambient computing just kind of passive technology that you don't have to interact with much but is kind of there for you or it does something for you in the background and you know the cellular is one big aspect of that but for the outdoors you know you started this by saying having multiple sources of maps and i think for me the garmin was always that like I have offline maps if I need them. Mm -hmm. And I think that did give me peace of mind. And I think I would do the solar just so that I know I could charge this off the sun very slowly if I really needed to. So it's like the ultimate backup plan, only second to like a paper map or something. Mm -hmm. Um, But the price can vary really widely for the Phoenix because of which of those you want. Um, You know, if you're comparing them straight across the the apple watch ultra does have the sapphire screen which you would need to compare that on the garmin as well because that's a big part of the scratch resistance um but you can always get them refurbished you know like i did on this uh website back market is sapphire less robust than the more apples it's more okay Mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah more and and the apple the ultra has a titanium body and uh, it's a 49 millimeter case. And I've been using it hard for a year. The bezel is is flawless. Yeah. And I, this is, I think, the third Apple Watch that I've had. I had a couple uh, earlier versions. And I, I ended up not using them for any outdoor stuff because they scratched. They just did, didn't hold up well. Whereas I'm blown away by how durable the Ultra is. The ultra is well it feels like it would be that's the weird like it's shiny it's 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 glassy but at no point when you're f- holding it does it feel fragile like it like it, i didn't worry about scratching it once like the second i bought it i mean i've had some pretty bad mountain bike falls in rocks with it i go to the gym i lift like free weights with dumbbells and i'm banging off of it doing kettlebell stuff and it, it looks brand new so so let, let me go through a couple of the specs and and as i mentioned at the top of the episode we're we're not trying to give you all of the specs we just want to give you the things that are, are key. And so I want to just highlight a few of them. And then I want to ask you guys, um, what's most important to you? Would, when you, perhaps when you, before you bought your watches and then while you're actually using the field. So one of the things that the ultra has that the other Apple watches doesn't is a, is a siren, um, which is quite loud. It has something that they call the action button, which enables you to map all different kinds of functions to the Apple to to the action button. Um, I typically use it as a flashlight. I, I map the flashlight to it. If I'm out in the field, I probably have it to create a waypoint. My one of my few complaints about the Ultra is I wish there were two action buttons because it's it's so useful. Um, it has dual GPS, so it's uh, it's more accurate than just one. It has 100% more GPS. Um, you can uh, use it as a dive watch um, mm-hmm. up to 40 meters. It's water resistant to 100 meters. It has a depth gauge and a water temperature, which... That's um, super cool in the ocean. 
It was super just super cool. cool. I also used, I was, I was squealing when, when I was in the American river earlier this summer. Like, it's so cold. Yeah. And I put the watch on like, Oh, it's, it's only 63 degrees. It's not that cold. <laughs> Southern California boy. Yeah. What, what can I say? I'm a warm water surfer guy. Um, so yeah, so, so those are kind of the key things and the durability and obviously the set of their aspect. What, uh, what jumps out to you, you fellas? <sighs> Well, I don't have the Ultra, but to, but to clarify, I still do have Sapphire on the screen. If you get the stainless steel body, you get the Sapphire, and I do have cellular. But, you know, I can't speak to the action button or anything like that. Kind of my solution was having the two watches and changing between them, having a system that kind of worked where I wasn't combining it into the Ultra, um, even though it does seem like super super capable so if you're going going to the outdoors and you could potentially survive on the 36 hours or so of battery life that it has are you still concerned about charging it just like you you would your phone if you were going to do maybe just one overnighter i am like how much do you think about the battery life uh, I, I, that's, I mean, that's rightfully so that's like the main detraction on this thing. I mean, I think you get like two days tops if you're actually using it for things, um, like probably less if you're using it for waypoints and navigation. So for me always, and I, I bring the one that came with, um, which, you know, is a USB C connection on the other end. And my, my truck has one in the stereo, so I can plug it in and charge it that way. But I also have a, um, I'm sure there are other brands that make it too, but Otterbox, Otterbox, Otterbox. Otterbox. They make like a little standalone charger for it that you just kind of wrap the watch around. And I'll bring that with me all oh, the time. Oh, I, I have to get myself one of those. Yeah, it's great. Because it's an, it is an issue. I wouldn't, I, yeah, I would, if I were using it for navigation or not navigation, for ambient, you know, for a, for a backup and then, uh, and it was an overnight, absolutely. I, if it's fully charged, I can go out all day and it's not that big a deal. Yeah. And you can always go to a low power mode. So the stated battery life is 36 hours of normal use, 72, I think it's 72 hours for low power mode. Low power. Mm -hmm. In normal use when I'm, I'm just, you know, an hour ride or run, hour and a half, not really talking on the phone that much. I actually get almost three days out of it. <laughs> um, but as soon as you start tracking mm -hmm. and, and doing calls, it's going to go down. Yeah, ca calls really zaps it. That's, that's true. I mean, I, I bet you I'm a heavy call user on the watch. I mean, I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen anybody else talking on their watch ever in the, in public, but I do it all the time. And that I've noticed is a pretty significant drain. So if that's something that you're going to use it for, you're, you're going to be charging it every night. I mean, you probably should anyway. That's a hard part for me to remember. I mean, I'm, I'm always on low power mode because I just forget to charge it all the time but not when I'm in the back country. That's why in that other episode, you were sympathetic to the music out loud people. Cause you're just walking around. Talking <laughs> that's true. Right that's, I mean, that, that is that I don't like to do it. I mean, I, that's the thing. If I had headphones, you could, you could, you know, obviously pairs with headphones. That's the other cool part we haven't really talked about too. I mean, I think all smartwatches do it, but like if you want to listen to music when you're somewhere, I mean, it's pretty rad to just be able to beam it off your, off your watch. I mean, you really can do everything but take photos. I mean, that's pretty much it. The one thing about the Garmin that drove me nuts, and I don't know if anybody else ever had this, but I had it with almost every Garmin, was that the, the docking system and the cable system for charging it never worked oh. right for me. It was horrible. I don't know if they have fixed that, but it, it it would I would get it plugged in and it just wouldn't charge or it wouldn't stay in the little port. And I think they have their it's a proprietary. Yeah, they have a proprietary. They're all proprietary. It's yeah. proprietary. Yeah. So it's not a USB C. And so yeah, the Phoenix would like on paper last days longer than an Apple, but I was I'd get out in the field and I'd go to plug it into my truck and I, I couldn't charge it. It wouldn't charge, even though I'd started with it fully charging. So hopefully they're, they've improved it or they're working on improving it. But you know, in, in a real world, like you're not going to use an Apple ultra probably to, to climb Everest, you know, to go on a month long expedition, you know, you're some, that kind of use case, you're not worrying about a smartwatch. So the reality is that in day-to-day -day urban, suburban, rural use, no matter what watch it is, it's always, your battery life is always going to be an issue. 
Mm -hmm. So the idea of just planning for it, whether it's a Garmin that's supposed to last a month or a week or whatever it is, or an Apple that watches, watch that lasts a few days, you, you just have to have that as a backup. I think that just needs to be part of your protocol and just making it a habit to keep it charged and keep looking. Well, so, so what's, I forget what it's called. I have it, but I, outdoor, what's the app you love? The yeah, for me, the game is called Work Outdoors. Work Outdoors. Yeah. Work Outdoors. And it's only in the Apple ecosystem. And um, no matter what Apple Watch you have, I strongly encourage you to check it out. Um, you can look at it's free. You can mm -hmm. look at their website, which is workoutdoors.net. It takes a watch that is really cool and capable and just blows the roof off of its capabilities. So you can, um, for whatever your activity that you're doing, you can create any number of screens that will track it. It has vector maps, which the Apple Watch doesn't. In fact, if Apple isn't looking at buying work outdoors, they probably should. Like it does what the Apple Watch probably is supposed to do. It does what you think it would do if you if you just went and bought one and turned it on without knowing what its capabilities were. Right. And it takes from a fitness standpoint, the things that you might be looking at a polar or soon to or a Garmin, it adds those to the Apple Watch in ways that are more usable by far than what Apple has built in. For example, um, I'm doing trying to do most of my riding and running in zone two, heart rate zone two, um, which is where most top athletes, which I am not, but most top athletes who are training, they do most of the training, like Killian Jornet, the, the runner, he's doing like 80% of his training in zone two. And so I've set up in work outdoors alarms for when I'm below that heart rate and when I'm above that heart rate. I've actually set it up to tell me when I'm about two beats from the high the high point. That's cool. Um, and so I can actually slow down a little bit. And with work outdoors, you can have it do a haptic little vibration, which I do, and it will also speak to you. It will tell you, uh, high heart rate warning, you are uh, you're at 138 or whatever it is, and then it will tell you when you've dropped back into it. Um, you can upload GPXs, you can upload waypoints, like Work Outdoors is a phenomenal mm -hmm. app. I, I can't stress that enough. And um, and of course, GBX is a, uh, uh, I don't know if it's an open source GPS data file, but it goes across Apple, Garmin, Strava. And I know Jackson has some thoughts on, on the power of GPX, but with with work outdoors, you can easily upload those to your um, to your watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, compared to most other industries and file types, it is remarkable that we have something like GPX that isn't just the route, but is the timing. Um, I, I forget if heart rate is stored a part of it, but all types of metadata can be stored in GPX and. There's all these mapping applications and you can put together your own system with an Apple Watch or anything else or your phone or it's pretty much all cross compatible because you can plan your route and ride with GPS. You can discover trails with trail forks. You can uh, track with Strava. I like to kind of like Gaia is the best for organization. So I put things in there to organize it. I mean there's so much possibility and, and you're free to use other applications on the Apple watch, like work outdoors, um, or plan it separately. And it really makes the whole system feel like you're, you're not locked in because you don't want to have anxiety when you're, when you're going to start a workout and you have to pick not only what device, but what app am I going to use to track this activity? so that I can still have that data portability. Like, I don't know if you track um, surfing, Justin, but I know that I've messed around the one time I went surfing in the past couple of years, there was like a third party. Yeah, I've had um, a couple of those. Right, yeah. Track like your paddling and your speed and, and all those sorts of things. It's kind of cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. The one wave that I caught, I think it can like how, many, how many waves the you apple, catch. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> but you don't have the thing. The thing I love about this watch too is that you don't like everything you just said. I know the words that you just said, Jackson. I know what those words mean individually and stuff. But I don't do any of that. I mean, I do use some very basic, rudimentary um, like mapping on it. I've used Work Outdoors for maps. It, it works great. But, you, but Gaia also works pretty good on the um, Apple Watch too. The Gaia app. 
But um, I mean, if you're someone like me who who is not like I've I have a Strava account. I've never really liked it. I don't. I'm just not interested in tracking my my outdoor activities very much. It's still worth 800 bucks because of the robustness, the ease of use for everything else, the connection, all that stuff. So you don't have to be like, don't think you need to be like someone who's going to have to plot every single thing that you're doing outdoors and like get a spreadsheet of it and like dive into that. You don't need to do that to enjoy the watch. Even without work outdoors and even without worrying about Strava or tracking, Apple did bake a lot of really cool navigational features into the watch. Um, I mean, this, first off, the screen is just a delight and yeah. it's so bright. And so using it as a compass or um, uh, inclinometer to know the steepness of a slope, I mean, it does those things instantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if you track your, if you activate the tracking um, and use the waypoint function in the watch itself, it will give you uh, proximity to that. So it, on the screen, it has a little circle and you're in the middle of the circle and it shows you where your waypoints are. And you can activate to navigate to those waypoints. But what I like about it is that it will tell me a direct line distance. It will mm -hmm. show me my track um, and it will uh, tell me how far above or below I am many years ago before there was any such thing as a smartwatch. A friend of mine and I in the spring um, climbed Mount St. Helens and skied down. And we got, I wouldn't go so far as to say lost, but, but we got a little off track and uh, where we parked his truck and we're kind of going down through the woods and, um, we hit the road in time, but we very easily, but through the topography, we could have missed the, the forest service road and gotten, you know, 500 feet below the truck and had to climb back up. So having things like elevation, proximity, distance, proximity, how far am I, especially if you're in a wooded area, how far am I from the trailhead? Am I above it or below it that I go past it? The ultra, the Apple watch does that really, really well. And it, the little graphic on its screen is great. And then it also has a track back option that if it will direct you to follow your yeah. trail. And, and that is, as I think Jackson said this, one of the ways that I most use my technology for navigation is just, did I turn left or right here? And I don't mm -hmm. rely on it, but I use it as a, as a backup when I'm heading back the way that I came, if it's an out and back, just because it's so easy, especially when you're tired, it's so easy to make the wrong turn. And I think that it really helps there. It's also just so like the interface is super intuitive for the for the backtracking. I mean, it's like you could have never seen it strap the watch on even in kind of panic mode, probably like, oh, God, where am I? You know, and if you've been tracking and, and look at it and figure it out real fast. I mean, like so, a lot of the other third party apps can be a bit complicated, but this one in true Apple form. A baby could look at it and understand what's going on. Do you feel at all like permanent like signage resources? on trails in parks has declined at all since everybody's using their phones for navigation? It's hmm. a good question. Watches. I don't think so, but that's an yeah. interesting question. I don't think so. I think that's a independent consideration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I always think about, about the necessity to have this tech with us is that because we have this tech, the whole world has changed and it's no longer appropriate to ask a restaurant to borrow their phone. Right. Or, you know, things that were that were before my time that I, I don't know as much about. But everybody was conditioned to a different pattern and pace of communication um, and maybe navigation, too. I, I've thought about how it would be interesting at Trailheads if there were like QR codes. I mean, you'd obviously have to have like cell service everywhere at this point for this to work. But if there was some sort of QR code that would create like a downloadable map, like as you were hitting a trailhead, that's got to be coming at some point. Um, that could be pretty useful because I don't all, I'm not always downloading maps before I go somewhere. You know, it might be a last minute decision to go on a trip or I might go somewhere I wasn't expecting to go next. That could be pretty cool, especially in national parks or areas that are heavily traveled. Mm -hmm. What's funny is that QR codes are actually a data storage format. That's just very low data. So I don't know how detailed of a map they could make with it, but there is like a certain like three megabytes or something that the like without cell service, the actual QR code is that. I data. didn't know that. 
I didn't realize that either. That's so cool. I mean, it makes sense, but that's cool. Yeah. It, one of the things that, I, I mean, I don't want my experience in the outdoors to be mapped out with little kiosks and things. But one thing that I, and I, I love it when I don't have a cell signal. I'm so happy when I don't have a cell signal of any kind. Um, the one time, the one thing that I crave is uh, I'm a big user of the Seek app and I want to know what I'm looking at. Yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out what this vegetation is, what these plants are. I'm trying to have a better relationship with the things that I see in nature. And I, with a watch, of course, you know, I, I can't do that anyway, but like, I don't have my, um, I don't have a camera. And so I can't take a picture and look at it when I get back. I would just, I would love to be able to, uh, to learn what things are, but that's not a failure of technology. <laughs> that's a failure of me just like investing in the time to learn it. So, so thank you for listening to us, uh, wrapping it up. Uh, we are not suggesting that you buy or not buy. Everybody has their own needs for these things. I hope, hopefully have um, shared with you what mine is. Justin, how would you summarize what, what you think that the watch does that the phone makes it doesn't? Worth thinking about? That makes yeah. it worth spending 800 bucks. Like, What's your elevator pitch on it? Well, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning that I'm a confirmed Luddite, which is absolutely true, um, especially when it comes to stuff in the backcountry. One of the things I always made fun of the original Apple Watch for was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, well, you just have a tiny phone on your wrist. Like, what's, I have a phone in my pocket. Like, who cares how, how much, you know, what's the point? Um, and I just, you know, I like everybody else trying to pare down my screen time. And, and I felt like I didn't want something else that was going to make me more more connected to content, more connected to wasting time on social media, more connected to sitting at a cafe and going, oh, "What's the name of that guy who played that guy in that one show?" and just going on to the so far, you know, just wasting all this time in the internet. And I assumed that that's what you could do with these watches, but that's that's the beauty of it is that you can't. I mean, you can't surf you can't surf the web on these watches. You can't access social media. At least I don't think you can. At least for the most part, you can't scroll Twitter. Um, so if you have this sort of fear that you're going to be always connected to these sorts of things that you feel like detract from your life, that's not what this is. That's not what they do at all. And if not, and you know, it, it, it does. And that's kind of what we talked about at the beginning. It frees you from that. You know, like I, I will do those things with my phone at a cafe. I will do those things with my phone on a bike ride. I mean, I, I, like it's gotten that bad, you know, I'll, I'll stop for a rest think, well, I haven't looked at Twitter in a, in a couple hours. What if somebody responded to that? rant I went on, you know, and it's like, it's just so freeing not to do that. So that alone to me is worth the money. I mean, if they could make this for a couple, I mean, again, you could probably buy an old Apple watch and get most of those capabilities too, but you, you drop it, it's, it's, you're screwed. So to me, it's easily worth the 800 bucks to free yourself from, from all of that sort of background noise. It's fantastic. Right. And the things that you can do on it, you don't have to do on it. So you can choose what apps are synced with your phone. So you can have email on it if you want to look at it or not. Yeah. But if you do look at those things, it, it's so pointless yeah. because the screen is so small. Like why in the world would I want to look at my email on my watch? I do not want to do that. Yeah. I don't think I've done that have, once. I don't yeah, think I've done that once. I could have photos on it, but, but why would I want to have photos on it? And so, um, yeah, I think Justin, your words were that it's it's really it's a communication device more than a content device, and I think that nails it. There you so. go. So if you if you are looking at buying it, uh, we've all had good luck buying refurbished uh, from back market backmarket dot com. Um, absolutely no skin in the game. We have no affiliate relationship. I don't know the people there. We just as consumers, we've had good luck there. It's a nice way of getting something that is not new. If you're looking for new, I think Apple has a 30 day return policy. So you can, you can check it out there. So, uh, and thank you so much for listening. If you have a chance, uh, we are trying to figure out the ghosts in the machine that are algorithms until then we will try to game them as best we can. Give us a like, give us a follow, give us a rating, give us a review wherever you're listening or watching this. That helps out a lot. If you want to check out the flagship of Adventure Journal, which is our gorgeous printed quarterly, uh, as I mentioned at the jump, we are going to be wrapping up this issue within the next two weeks. It is another banger issue. Then you can subscribe or get single copies at adventure-journal.com. You can sign up for our newsletter there. We're on all the socials. 
find us, whatever works for you. Thank you and take care.